stuff <laughs> either is working about science films. I'm Jimmy P, filmmaker and sexual astronaut. And as ever, I'm joined by my organic co-host. Organic. James Morrissey, one half of the Mad Science Films team. How's it going, people? So remember, if you do like this video, then please hit that like button. If you've been enjoying the Mad Science content, then want to subscribe to our channel and come follow us on Facebook. If you have any comments or suggestions, then leave those in the comment section down below. Let's crack on with the show. Also, guys, please check out our fourth feature film for free on YouTube. Just search for Little Monster or click on the link in the show notes below. This week, we're campaigning for a forgotten masterpiece of genre cinema to be given the beautiful Blu-ray treatment. This week is my choice. And of course, I've chosen Bums. I'll elaborate slightly. Bums from 1993. <laughs> I mean, I don't recommend you just Google Bums or even Bums movie because lots of stuff turns up. I Bums. actually did that. Yeah, I actually did that to uh, to rewatch it and loads of things come up. So I had to put the actual year and in the film club. So yeah. Yeah. So to be specific, Bums from 1993, directed by Andy Gola Gala. Uh, also known in some countries as Street Warriors, but I prefer bums. I'm a bums man. What can I say? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go. Let's move swiftly on. Let's head into the synopsis. After his homeless brother, Matthew, is murdered, Sergeant Andrew Holloman trains a group of bums in order to catch the killers. Wow. Jim. Is this the first time you've seen Bums? This is the first time I've seen Bums. Um, yeah, first time watch for me. And uh, yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> I like the type of film that it is. Okay, I like that kind of stuff. Uh, I like the kind of social commentary to it, you know, bottom of the ladder. Homeless people can also be stoic um and have morals and, and obviously want justice blah 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 um it kind of gets in there straight away doesn't it with the killing you know straight off the bat it doesn't hang around for too long it gets right in there um i kind of like i did like the bums in arms become brothers in arms kind of aspect to it so you know forming the team under the guise of sergeant um andy Drew something or other that. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah, so played by Christopher McDonald. I like Christopher McDonald. I, I'm, I, I've seen more, I've seen him in more comedic roles, I guess. So that was kind of hard to separate him from because um, he has this certain intensity to him, doesn't he? Yes. But I, I've seen that in more of a comedic aspect than let's, like a. Let's embrace a the fact that he is Shooter McGavin. But that's what I tried to get out of my head. Because <laughs> um, there was definitely moments where I I, I, I saw him a shooter rather than this sergeant. Who lost his I was brother. waiting for him to talk to the bums and go, look, I eat pieces of shit like you for breakfast. But, <laughs> but So, yeah, so I, I, I kind of bought a lot of that and that was kind of cool to watch. Um, I just wanted it to go a bit grittier, like a bit... A bit more great, I like, like a bit more, like everything seemed to be shot on a wide as well. Like everything to be almost like a stage play. Like I wanted it to come in and really get close yeah. on Chris McDonald and, you know, really see him kind of going through this emotional turmoil and this struggle. Um, and, and, and maybe a bit more with the homeless guys, maybe being a bit more hands on and, and a bit more serious as kind of ex military personnel coming together to just see a bit more of that i don't know because yeah, yeah, it, 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 yeah it kind of lacked a bit of a punch for me but it wasn't too much where i just didn't like it like i could see what they were trying to do i could see the effort and there was some good good scenes in it there was a nice bit of comedy in there as well some some humorous kind of lines and stuff like it's only a little line this may sound pathetic if, if, when i tell you but it was that bit where they uh towards the end where the larger of the homeless guys gets caught and he goes oh yeah you know you're lucky because you know we we actually work for the fbi and da, 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 da. and they smack him, he goes you don't work for the fbi and then on the other end he's like cia and he's kind of naming all these agencies which he could possibly work for so it's like a lot of stupid little things like that but yeah it was good it was good i enjoyed it um 
Yeah, and it's always nice to see Chris McDonald in more serious roles, I guess, as well. So, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah again, this is a first time watch for me. Again, the algorithm kind of threw it up to me. Um, I agree, actually. Yeah, I was expecting it to be a lot grittier. Uh, the cover's like a really 90s pulpy video cover. Um, and yeah. actually, though, I quite like the fact that it's quite light and comedy esque. Um, it works nicely as a, as a contrast and and you know i think it would have been really easy to go that grim gritty kind of thing um yeah definitely with the the veteran thing they could have made more of that um what i did really enjoy uh, and and you touched on there with, about the social commentary was the fact that these guys were actually like the perfect spies because people try yeah. tend to avoid the homeless or they're treated as invisible or not there or whatever. So the bits where, you know, they're doing uh, reconnaissance and they're, you know, like, you know, doing the spying and stuff like that. Perfect. You know, they, they are the perfect people to kind of do that. Um, and I do, it, it's, it's a subgenre of vigilante movies that I love, which is the, you know, uh, the wronged person trains up a group of <laughs> other normal people. To, to fight back yeah um and you know that kind of i've, I've got like a, a list of recommendations related to that um and, and it, it kind of just blows it up into being a bit bit more cartoonish than your, your standard gritty you know vengeance movie you know like the vigilante movie is slightly mm-hmm. different from the vengeance movie um and yeah i i really dug it um i think my mm-hmm. favorite part of it was the the bum characters they really managed to develop each of them to become their own kind of characters so you've got teach you know the alcoholic ex-professor who was a medic in the army and all of this kind of stuff Mm. um Mm. the the opening two bums one of which gets knocked off were kind of like the laurel and hardy of homeless people um yeah animal the, the big dude who doesn't talk and you know then turns out can talk he just chooses not to um, and there were some other great character actors like Sloan, who's like the lockpick guy, you know, who's always trying to pinch the yeah, yeah. people, uh, played by Matt Mittler, who was in like a bunch of like sci-fi stuff, which uh, you can actually catch on Arrow, like uh, Mutant War. Um, and he was also in, I think, The Mutilator, again, another early 80s oh, okay. So, yeah, he's been in loads of stuff as well. And I really <laughs> liked how they developed each of them to have their distinct characters, you know. Um, yeah. And, and what i loved like in terms of the progression is at first it's like you know um god i want to call him shooter mcgavin what's his (laughs) chris mcdonald (laughs) chris mcdonald you know he's like exploiting these homeless people and 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 at first you're kind of like throwing money at him isn't he like it's kind of like a yeah throwing money in a soap at him and it's like you you're kind of being a dick you know you're putting these people's lives at risk um but eventually, you know, they also, he he not only gains their respect, but they gain his respect, vice versa. Yeah. Um, and there's a great scene, like, at the cusp of between Act 2 and Act 3, where after, you know, he's put them through army drills and army training, they teach him how to be a bum. Yes. And that scene for me is brilliant because he's completely wrong-footed, uh, you know, and he's just kind of walking around. And they, they start, you know, rubbing, like, crap on him, but they're teaching yeah. him how to walk and everything. But I just think that's brilliant um and it reminds me a lot and i'm not saying this show ripped it off but there's um an ep- there's an episode in the first season of the wire where these undercover cops are trained how to act like junkies and it's almost identical in terms of like you know having all these like crack uh like uh, capsules like ground into the bottom of their boots and you know like twitching and all this kind of stuff and it's 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 almost identical. So maybe you know they both just done the research at the same place. Uh, but I absolutely mm. loved it. Um, I also one of the things that again I I think if it they'd gone gritty, um, you know the, it would it would have would have been cooler if the killer was just a killer, like a psycho killer who killed rather him. than like yeah that. the 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 bigger plot the twist the bigger yeah. plot. Yeah. Uh, and again, you know, we, we saw this in, in one of our early episodes, Dead End City. You know, the idea is it's gentrification. Mm. They're killing off all the bums yeah. um, you know, to, to make it like a, a nicer place to live. So I did like mm. that. Um, and I liked early on, you know, like, you know, the very brutal way the throat slit and then, you know, like gloves off and, and throw it down the drain. Mm. And stuff. I thought that was really well done. But yeah, the conspiracy, whereas I quite liked it in Dead End City, um mm. i think in this you didn't quite need it and actually if anything you know just a, a psycho killer picking off bums would have maybe worked a bit better overall yeah 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 um yeah 
Chris McDonald, uh, I thought it was great. I mean, you know, for somebody rocking such uh, a Freddie Mercury tash, uh, I thought he played it very well. Uh, could have done without the, the sex scene, to be honest. <laughs> Felt a bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't need to see that. Uh, but again, that might be my my own, you know, hang ups on Shooter McGavin. And, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah. such a, a, a role. And yeah, like, you know, I think. It, 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 it is. It is. Yeah, but it, 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 was, it was nice to see him, you know, finally get in the girl of the film. But like, I follow his career and I, I know all his films. And uh, but it's nice to see Shooter McGavin get the girl. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely, mate. Absolutely agree with you. Okay. All righty. So, Jim. Who do you think yeah. is the best place to put this bad boy out on Blu-ray? Well, I mean, I had a, so I've had a look around, and um, uh, Vinegar Syndrome, they have some yeah. um, classic um, uh, revenge films on there. Um, Code Red, uh, they've got some 80s action thrillers as well, like on the streets. There's one with Linda Blair. And with a crossbow. Um, Ooh, uh, Savage Street? Yes. Avenger. Yeah. So, yeah, Code Red. Um, yeah, I've just got two, actually. So there, there's the two. Yeah. Vinegar Syndrome and Code Red. Yeah. That's, that's one more than me. I've, I've gone with 88 films. Um, and again, yeah. they do love their 90s action stuff. Um, and I think they don't tend to go too grim and gritty. And I think the, the lighter tone will work well in yeah. their kind of catalogue of films. Uh, so yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, I've gone with eight, eight films, but yeah, totally did get your suggestions as well, dude. Okay, so Jim, you've watched Bums. You're feeling like you know you've seen the left cheek. Now you need to see the right. What are you going to follow up Bums with? Oh, right in the middle. Um, <laughs> I've gone for it's an obvious one, but I think that if you want gritty revenge, um, violence on the streets, then you know look no further than Death Wish. Um, I've and then another one I've gone for, which is kind of a military guy comes back to maybe not avenge, but kind of like deal with his brother's murder, and that's a wall. Some Ooh. Van Damme classic, love there. it, I love yeah. it. Um, and a very messed up, uh, homeless people getting some revenge. Rucker Hauer, hobo with a shotgun. Um, so yeah, if you want some good fun, homeless guy with a shotgun kicking yeah. out. And, and, yeah, the revenge aspect there as well. Yeah, absolutely. They so, steal yeah. his um lawnmower. Don't fuck with my lawnmower, man. Um, so yeah, there's my three. Good, good calls, good calls. Uh yeah, I've also gone with like the vigilante revenge kind of aspect, but as I was talking about earlier the training them up so you've gone with death wish one i've gone with death wish three where again he's, he's in new york and he trains up like an apartment block of you know inhabitants there to fight back um and it's also the film where they kind of give up being realistic at all and grim and gritty and it is much more of like a cartoon yeah superhero kind of thing uh, so death wish three i think we pair nicely with bums um then dial it way back to what i think is probably one of the earliest films in the vigilante training up people subgenre the seven samurai so again you know it's about a village who don't have the means or the skills to fight back so they they get these seven samurai from around japan and they're trained up to fight back against these marauders so i'm going with that um, then one of my favorite vigilante movies of all time, and again has aspects of you know training up uh, people to fight back, is Vigilante from 1982, directed by William Lustig. So the guy who did Maniac and Maniac Cop, yeah. brilliant film. If you haven't seen it, it's got Robert Foster and Fred Williamson. Mm. Really pulpy classic, 1982. Just really entertaining. Uh, definitely worth checking that checking out. Uh, and then with Chris Christopherson, Vigilante Force from 1976. So again, part of that subgenre and well worth a watch. So mm. those are mine. As I said, I'm, awesome. I'm a big fan of that, you know, Vigilante subgenre there. Okay. So cool. Jim, that's that's our recommendations. Uh, what about you guys? Is there anything you think would pair nicely with bums? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, there we go. I had to do it. <laughs> um, uh, have you guys seen Bums? What did you think of Bums? Did you agree with our take on Bums? <laughs> do you have the film flashing? Every time you see Bums, like titled the film underneath. I'll, I'll have, yeah, just yeah. post a pop-up to remind people. Um, 
are there any other Blu-ray, uh, are there any other films that you think deserve the beautiful Blu-ray treatment? If so, let us know in the comments. Um, also, guys, we yeah, absolutely love recommendations. So if you guys have got recommendations, please shoot them our way. Uh, a lot of fun. We've got a, another couple coming up. Um, and so, yeah, we, we love uh, kind of delving in because often they're films that we ourselves haven't seen as well. So yeah, definitely. Uh, Jim, what else can people do? So guys, remember, if you do like this video, then hit the like button. If you've been enjoying the Mad Science content and want to subscribe to our channel or come stalk us on Facebook, any comments or suggestions, and leave those in the comment section down below. Thank you and goodbye.